What are grain jar lids? What do they do? Which one's best, modified or unmodified? Let's get right into it. Yeah. What is up everybody? This is Michael Filesage checking in here today. And in today's video, as I said in the introduction, we're gonna be looking at grain jar lids. Now this is this video is officially part three of the Mushroom Mastery series. For, so for those who are following that series, we are actually gonna be using the modified version. Uh, but just for your first grow, right? But later on, we are also gonna be doing some agar work. And when we get to that agar work part, we're gonna be using unmodified lids because that's basically in short what I prefer nowadays. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Let's quickly cover what do grain jar lids do. So what they do is they allow your mycelium to colonize safely because they are the barrier, A, between outside contaminants and the sterile environment that you want to keep your grains in as they are colonizing. So Sage, why don't you just seal the jar, right? Just unmodified like this, just seal it, and then you won't have to worry about it. Well, because the mycelium also has to breathe, just like human beings. They need to have some gas exchange. And so that's where grain jar lids come in. So modified, right? One way of doing it, a classic way, is just a hole in micropore tape. This is a method that I pretty much use for modified. And more recently, over the last couple of years, uh, unmodified tech has come into favor, right? So that's basically where you take just a regular sort of bracket like this, and then you flip it around so that there's a little bit of a gap between the bracket and the this part, right? The middle part. So as you can see, there's a little bit of gap there. So it's an imperfect seal um, and it pretty much doesn't let contaminants in. So when you close your jar, you just want to sort of unscrew it a little bit. So that is unmodified essentially. And this is the method that I've been using for a year and a half now and hasn't let me down, it works. Uh, but there are some downsides to it. Uh, there are some convenient parts to using one with micropore tape. And just a quick interjection, I forgot to mention about the rust. So I know a lot of people have this idea that rust is gonna, you know, rusted grain jar lids, you can't use them. Uh, why? It's nonsense. Once you sterilize it, it's completely fine. Same with metal, they're completely fine. It's just a cosmetic thing. And as long as the structural integrity of this is still fine, as long as the rust, for example, is not like taking off huge chunks out of your jar lid, you're completely fine. It's just cosmetic. All right, back to the video. Now for the longest time, people used to say that you can't do micropore tape. It's just a really bad filter. Uh, you know, just the hole in the micropore thing. So in the past, people used to, you know, consider synthetic filter discs. So that's like Tyvek filters, essentially. Uh, as like the best kind of jar uh, lid system. Um, now nobody really talks about it. And also another one is polyfill. People just put a bunch of polyfill in there, sort of like how you do monotubs. And the, the argument was that just micropore doesn't really work as a good filter. And well, I'll let you guys know that it works very, very well for me, um, when I at least when I used to use it a lot. Uh, in fact, this channel was started because I had a two-year-old grain jar right, with micropore tape filter, and it was completely fine. For two years, I inoculated it, and they just colonized beautifully. So, you know, my history of the channel just goes back to that and sort of dispelling all this misinformation. In addition, that jar also showed that grain jars, as long as you sterilize them properly, can last a long time, right? They're not going to contaminate after two weeks, as a lot of people used to say. Uh, you know, people say, hey, you got to inoculate it as soon as your grains are ready. If you sterilize it properly and your grains are clean, then you shouldn't have any issues long term. So now that we've established that this works, um, I want to show you guys how to do it. So, OK, very quickly. So those of you guys following the Mushroom Mastery series, you want to have a three to four millimeter hole. You don't want to have a bigger hole than this because then you're going to risk more like contaminants coming inside and you're also going to risk your grains drying out because it's getting too much gas exchange, right? Too much air exchange. And so there's a couple methods you could go about doing it. I personally like to use one of these. This is a belt hole puncher, right? It's a belt hole puncher and they work great for it. That's how I made this one. But you could also just take a hammer and a nail, bam, Generally, you, sh you, could, you should be able to get the perfect sole, hole size doing it that way. Uh, or you could use a drill. You know, basically, you just want to get a hole. 
and you don't want it to be too big. So three to four millimeters is a sweet spot. You could even go less, two millimeters, and you should be good. So once you do that, then you want to use micropore tape, okay, to cover the hole. And I like to do two layers, right? And then uh, if you use like a syringe to inoculate it through the hole, then two more layers after that. So a quick word on micropore tape. So, you know, a lot of people, there's, there's like different types of micropore tape out there. Um, you want to get this type, this exact type. This is paper micropore tape, right? This is, this is essentially what it is. And micropore tape, uh, a lot of things are named micropore tape because uh, as the name suggests, it's micropore. So there's like little holes in there. And what that allows is for it to breathe. So we call it surgical tape and stuff like that. So that, you know, when you're healing your skin or whatever, then it can actually heal because it's getting some oxygen. But not all of them are made equal for our purposes. In mycology, when people talk about micropore tape, they're talking about the paper kind of tape like this. Because there's tapes out there, there's micropore tapes out there that are uh, sort of transparent. Like they sell them in the same section as micropore, but they're called transpore tape. Uh, and I see some people using that. That's not the tape that you want to be using for these purposes. You want to be using the paper micropore tape. So then what you want to do is you just want to take your micropore, right? One on there. I'm doing this really roughly, guys. Just one on there, all right? Two layers, and then you're good. Now, with the modified lids, you want to have the lids go like this. So just basically the regu regular way around. But with unmodified lids, you want to flip it, as I said earlier. So, you know, this is how the jar would usually go like that, right? This side on the bottom. But with the unmodified lids, you want to flip it around. So the bottom is facing up. So let's talk about the pros and cons. Okay, so the only reason that I use this is if I'm going let's say like directly from syringe, which is another no-no that people say, believe me, if your spores are clean, they'll be fine. At least I have not, never had contams because of a spore syringe that I made from spore prints that I made, right? So your mileage may vary with vendors. It's a lot riskier because their parameters are a lot less precise than, you know, somebody doing it kind of, you know, not mass producing it basically. But I basically use this for syringe inoculation whether that's liquid culture or spore syringe. Because I don't have to set up a still air box or my, my flow, uh, FFU or anything like that. I just flame sterilize the needle. Just flame sterilize the needle. And then I just stick it in there. Shoot some drops and then we're good. Afterwards, take your micropore, put two more layers on there. As simple as that. So that's why I use this. So every time I use any syringe-based inoculant, I like to use the whole system. For every other system, which is the majority, when I'm going basically from agar plates, right, like this, when I'm going from agar plates, I will go unmodified. Simply because it's not like a performance thing or anything like that. I don't find any difference between the performance of this or that. I don't find any ex increased contamination with this compared to this. And also it's good to just sort of have like lids for me personally to be a little bit more incognito, to have lids without like holes in them. It's just, I don't know, it's just cleaner and it's just a little bit, a little bit nicer to have around the house. And I forgot to mention guys, when you do this, you wanna also tape. You wanna put a little bit of tape on the corner so that the lids are stuck together for agar inoculation, right? So that when you open your jar so you could drop your piece of agar in, then the lid and the inner lid move as one. So that when you pull it off, you don't have to, it's not going to go like this. You take this off first and then you have to touch your hand on the lid. It's very, very, you know, bad sterile practice there. Uh, so if you just tape them together here, just a little bit of tape does the job, guys. A little bit of duct tape there. Then it'll just come off cleanly. I'll demonstrate it right now. Just like that. <laughs> so usually I like to use a lighter colored tape, but this is just to show you the, the principle, as you can see, just this corner is enough to lift the whole thing up. No issues. So it sticks together. This is a very important part uh, of the uh, modified tech. Now you could also use like those plastic lids that they have nowadays. They have plastic jar lids that you can buy 
and that is one piece. And you could use that for unmodified as well. You're just gonna have to unscrew it a little bit, right? You don't you don't want to unscrew it too much. You just won't have to unscrew it a little bit, and they should have enough gas exchange to safely colonize. So. That's pretty much the video for today, guys. So I hope I was able to help you guys out. So the next entry in the Mushroom Mastery series is gonna be the brown rice. So keep an eye out for that. And again, just to remind you guys, all the supplies for those of you who are following the series is in the description. And please check out my website for weekly videos. I don't post much on YouTube now because I can't post fruits on here. And to me, that's not very fun. It goes against my style. So if you would like to support my work, if you would like to check out what I'm up to, there's hours and hours and hours of footage on the website. It's in the description as well. And there's also the genetics tier if you guys are interested. Monthly genetics straight to your doorstep. Every month, fresh, new, clean genetics for your microscopy research. All right, guys. So that's the video for today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, Michael File Sage. Checking out for now. Bye bye, guys.